This is the story of how I got locked up and managed to turn my life around. I haven't said this to anyone, but when I did get locked up. I'm Rungo Ki, professional strongman, business owner, and loving family man. I'm embarking on a new journey in my life, where filmmaker friend Mitch and I will be visiting communities from all over and learning how they live their lives. My goal is to show the world the unordinary things of these ordinary people. This is a local's tale. Before we could embark on any other community, I wanted to share the story of the town that built me up and broke me down. This is Kalgoorlie. Kalgoorlie is located 594 kilometers inland from Perth. And from the late 1800s, people have been coming to Kalgoorlie to mine gold. It's got one of the biggest open pit mines in Australia and still brings in over a billion dollars of gold a year. Literally, the town is sitting on gold. But the thing is with gold brings money. With money brings people. With people brings crime. 17 doors smashed in, 20 people in cuffs. And Kalgoorlie is known for its crime. From gang shootouts, to passing through miners getting into scraps with the locals. They even had a show called Kalgoorlie Cops, specifically dedicated to the crime of Kalgoorlie. So yes, Kalgoorlie had a high crime rate and I was caught up in the middle of it. It was just a matter of time before it caught up to me. To understand how I got caught up in it all, we have to take a trip back to my upbringing. Back in New Zealand as a kid, I was brought up in an unstable environment, being dragged town to town around the country by my father. From a young age, I was dropped off to stay at people's houses that I hardly knew, for days, sometimes weeks on end, while my father was elsewhere. Around this time, I was adopted. I was brought up on a farm with five other foster brothers in a small town called Mohaka. We were taught life lessons through working hard on the farm. This was honestly the first time I had stability in my life. By the time I was in high school, I had been in and out of 25 different schools. I was classified as a red alert, meaning my learning levels was extremely delayed compared to other kids my age. Singing ended up being a big part of my family growing up. My foster mother, Nolene, decided to enter me into New Zealand Idol. And surprisingly, I made it through all the rounds and finished in the top five. This was my chance to make it. I moved to Auckland to pursue my singing career. I had just turned 18, things were different. The city life began to catch up to me. The farm and the city are two different lives and I was not prepared for the city life. Within no time I had forgotten about singing and fell into the wrong crowd, continuously getting myself into trouble. My foster father Peter saw the direction I was going and he did not want that life for me. Peter and Nolene Hawkins booked me a one-way ticket to Kalgoorlie. They told me they loved me and they wanted more for me in my life. I hit the ground running, working as a scaffolder in the mines of Kalgoorlie. It was long, hard hours, just as I was taught. All was well until the weekends rolled around, when everyone came in from the mines to hit the Kalgoorlie nightlife. And yeah, we rumbled. This is the Exchange Hotel. One night, the whole pub broke out into a fight. But what happens is they turned on all the lights and pushed everyone out this one door. Everyone scattered out onto the road and started fighting all in here. Out on this road was stopped full of people fighting. The police came from different areas and they tried to get involved and they ended up getting bashed too. So they backed off big time and then let everyone fight. I got given the nickname Smash. Not something that I'm proud of. This alleyway is backed off the main street. Um, pretty much 50 meters down the road is the main clubs. Now, woohoo! This is where you came to sort business out when you didn't want anyone to see or anything to happen. Right here, we're tucked away. And um, fuck, I've seen a lot of shit happen in this alleyway. I've seen a lot of people get knocked out. I myself have been knocked out in this alleyway. <laughs> I'm laughing about it because I'm just having flashbacks of and shit that went down in here. I've come down here to support friends. I've come down here just to watch friends and watch other people fight. So fucking there's blood on this concrete, man, from what happened down here. 
And that's what's crazy. You'd come down, sort your business out. Two would walk in, one would walk out. It's fucking mind blowing. But as always, things do catch up with you. Um, this is the location where um, uh, the assault happened here when I had my fight a few years ago that led me to my um, prison sentence. Not a proud thing to talk about. A lot happened here that night. Um, a huge fight broke out and in the middle of it all um, me and two other gentlemen were fighting and unfortunately uh, they were injured during the fight. Back then they would punch on all the time, you know, that's how it was back then. And it is still today. Kalgoorlie's well known for punch ons, you know, you got a problem, you sort it out, you throw hands. Um, but one of the guys was seriously injured. Um, back then that's how it was, with the older me now, um, I understand, you know, it was a stupid thing to do. And um, I've taken it on the chin like a man then, I've done my time and I've moved on from it, but I don't come here often <laughs> at all. So to come here is, when I see this place, it just brings back a whole lot of emotions, you know, so welcome. been a while since I've been here um, I still today come and see some of my friends that um, are still locked up and that have got some pretty crazy sentences ahead of them so to more humble myself um, yeah right now I'm just having a moment because whew, a lot of emotion here um, a lot to process being here a lot happened on that side of the um, fence yeah I remember walking out those doors and on the other side of that fence you're nothing but a number you know and when you walk through that door it's like in an instant you're not a number anymore and it took me a long time I never told this to anyone it took and I'm sure anyone that's watching that has been locked up before it's not normal when you come into the real world because in there you're programmed you're programmed by them and you become a number and I remember for like weeks when I got out I couldn't be around too many people I had to be home at a certain time I had to be I was used to be being incarcerated in my room and I remember having moments with my wife where I'd need to be on my own and stuff as weird as it sounds it's the truth but you know it's still good to come here have a visit with some of my brothers in there and I say this man I met some of the most realest people in there and some of them that are out now are my bestest friends so, you know, I've also helped a lot of people that have come out of those gates and I promised them when I went in I said when you get out and you want to change your life I'll help you and I'm proud to say that I've done that for a few of them especially some of our Aboriginal brothers to the point where they're all working full time now and I'm proud to say that because one thing is this is when you do go in everyone frowns upon you looks at you and if you come out um, everyone judges you on your past and what you've done and I'm proud even though I've been in there ever since I've lived there I've still carried on with my life and done some pretty amazing things and helped a lot of people, so I'm proud of that. And that's my mission, man, is to go out and say, no matter what happens, man, you can 
can do anything you want. It's just a bit, bit of a moment being here. And I was just saying too, <laughs> my uh, my youngest is here, Kaya, with me. He was with me in there, still in my balls. So <laughs> me and my wife were just having a laugh about it. So, hey, it's fun, it's love. But yeah, this is um, an experience that'll be with me forever. And how I know I'm not going back in there. When I arrived home from prison, I had to begin rebuilding my new life. Five years later, my life is better than ever. So this is my new life. out here because I have to be at work by 6 so getting up doing my 30 minutes cross trainer 15 minutes stretching and then we do three runs of hot and cold these morning recovery sessions are more just to prepare me for the day we're coming towards the end of the week now and my body is banged up I'm drained physically and mentally with work <clears throat> and life so these just kick my day off right now I'm gonna head in, have a shower, get my work uniform on. We're gonna head down to the scaffold. We own and run a scaffolding company here in the gold fields of Kalgoorlie. Let's go. Everyone's about to rock up, so we're gonna head on in. I'm just like everything else. Good morning. Morning, Morena, sis. Morena, sis. Morena. <laughs> hey, I'll show you some help. Come, come. Oh. If it wasn't for all, I wouldn't have a job, bro, because I came here with no. I came here with no job. So he just created me a job. Looks out for everyone, I reckon. Bro, so I've come over to Cal to just start a whole new life, eh? Hey? Um, First of all, my brother's been here for like a whole year and um, I started missing the bro from back home so I started to just pack up, sell my house, pick up everything and just move over here and so now we've been here for seven weeks and I'm really loving it eh? and uh, obviously having it all um, with my strong man background he's obviously guiding me as well here so that's a bonus and also giving me a job bro so I go I go out to mine sites and I go out to around the township to fill up vending machines that he owns and runs so yeah it's fun. We've just done our toolbox all the boys are starting to prep themselves to head up for the day. Our mission today for me is I've got to take the boys out to sort out the work front because we've got a huge job starting and then I've got to get back to town because we've got a few vending machines that need to go out but also the sister's heading out to start topping up all the vending machines that need topping up today. So it is busy, no use talking about it. Let's be about to get done. All right, we are on uh, one of the sites that we are serviced called FMR, uh, about 35, 40 k's out of Calgary. out of the hole is dropped up the top here which is dropped through the crushing circuit which is crushes it down it goes through a few more draw presses and stuff and then it's put into fine material which then goes up and is then dropped into a ball mill which is then crushed up even more and then it's sent up through the plant 
to draw the gold out of it. Now there is a detailed way that they do it, babe, but I wouldn't have a bloody clue, but that's the pretty much the gist of it. Bloody hell, babe, can't you see I'm here doing a bloody video and you want to... Welcome to our backyard. It's been pretty crazy because I've been doing this for 18 years, so to me it's normal. But it's not normal. <laughs> We're in the middle of nowhere, pulling gold out of the ground. Can you tell us how you organise yourself? Well, there's many ways to organise yourself. Half the time I just look in the mirror and slap myself. And other times I was confused. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've been doing this long enough to learn from my mistakes. I think one thing about business and life is to learn from your mistakes. And I've made many mistakes in um, my career in business. Over time, I've just learned how to organize things, figure things out, but most importantly, fix problems, which is a good thing. Oh, see, that's the um, thing that people don't understand is like a lot of people see me on social media and all they see is the strong man and the humor and the positive guy, but... <laughs> what actually goes on and how much is actually involved not only to be a strong man but a businessman a loving husband a father and just all those things it, it, it takes a lot if I can squeeze all these things into my day and um, still have time to make sure I have time for my family and stuff I'm like surely people out there that watch this can inspire them that they can do more you can do anything you want in life you've just got to pull your finger out and give it a good go. Anyway, someone's waiting for me, brother. I've got to get out there and get it going. We've got to move. Today's been busier than I thought it was going to be, which means I am behind on my meals. So, to catch me up, I'm just going to shoot and get some sushi. Uh, Maximus, if you're watching this, um, don't watch this. Just look away for this next part because I'm going to go and destroy some sushi because I'm starving. I usually get a break to go and cook some meals, but I don't have time, so let's go. Three teriyaki. Oh, oh, two, one teriyaki and three things. See, you know me, eh? Yeah, you know me. I've never been here before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wowza! We are on another mission, guys. I have two jobs. Okay, um, we have the scaffolding and then we have vending. Right now, one of our machines is bringing up an error. So we are going to shoot out with our handy dandy notebook and go and see what's going on with it. So come forward, right, let's go. This machine came up with a mad error. So something's wrong with it. I'm just going through the system to make sure everything's all good. Another machine had something jammed in it. So it's been a while since we've had an error. So for some reason today of all days, we've got errors. So we're just making sure everything's all good. What a coincidence. There's a protein shake in here that fell out for free. Unbelievable. There's an art to that. Did you notice the way I took full control of the bottle and I did a lock draw effect and then I was like. Alright everyone, I'd like to introduce you to my lovely family. This is Kaya. Say hello Kaya. Say hi. Hi. And this is Shaquille. Say hi Shaq. Hi. Also known as Shaka. And this is Zaya. Say hi Zaya. Where's mum? Mum. Mum's busy right now. Welcome to my family. The hardest thing over the years I've found is um, switching from work mode, family, 
father, husband, and two strong men. Um, thanks, son. <laughs> So guys, we've got a guest appearance here from Kaya. He would like to show everyone his camera. There, thank you, hi. So um, it's learning to switch off life and switch on to being the warrior. And the warrior is someone who's totally different. The warrior is here to train and compete. So what I do is I have my food to fill my body and then I always come in here and I start my rollout. Now my rollout process is simple. Um, I'm using the guns and the roller, really just to get blood moving through my body, but I use it as a way to mentally wake my body up. So when I leave here and I walk into the gym, um, I'm there and nothing else matters. That's us, quick rollout. One thing I love about this sport is you have no one to rely on but yourself, you know. You can have the best coach, the best nutritionist. None of it matters if you don't put it in. <clears throat> right now I'm being tested. Yeah, but he's feeling twice as heavy. And my body's not, not responding the way it should be, but... Might just let a little bit of animal in there to get me through. <clears throat> <clears throat> Walk in there like a bitch, it's gonna move like a bitch. Let's go off, guys. Off. Hey. Fucking hide from it. Fucking grab it. You're making me the best of love with the third time. Wake up. That's what you ought to fucking do. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> Let's go, come on. Destroy it, last year, PC, come on now. Come on, you know what you need to do. Come on. 
They'll fight for that. Oh. But I'm happy with um I'm happy with the result today because I know that I can come back next week. Uh, the weights will go up and we can do better. Let's get home, get some food in, get the family ready, because tonight is the night. Let's go and see. First of all, gentlemen, congratulations for making it here, all right? Today is just another game, and I want to tell you guys something. The team that we're playing are nervous. Not the first three, the one that's been... All of you who don't know, I actually coach a T-ball team, uh, the Sharks, and I'm proud to say that we have made the grand final here tonight. It's been an awesome season, an up-and-down season. Um, we were the underdogs of the whole competition, and um, I'm really proud of the kids, so we're about to play the top team. Welcome to the game. I'm nervous for them, but also I'm excited for them. I'm proud of them. And um, no matter what happens tonight, that's a win for all of us. So let's go. <clears throat> Zazai, I'm on my son, where's your bat? Now look at me, okay? Deep breaths, and out. Deep breaths, and out. Okay, where's Jack? Jack's over there, yep. Yep, he's out on the Okay, so you don't hit the jack when you don't have a suit. So I need you to go down one, okay? Go down one, let's go. Zai, let's go my bro, let's go. Let's go Sharks, come on. Hey, give me some, let's go, you're good. Proud of each and every one of you today. Okay, no one expected us to be here at the grand final, but we are, all right? So be proud, keep your chins up. Bring it in here for a Sharks on three, please, let's go. Nice and loud so everyone can hear on three. One, two, three, Sharks! Let's go. I, these last few days, man, have really brought up a few emotions. And now that I'm older, some of the things I've done in my past, you know, I'm, I'm not proud of. Actually, you know, just, if these knuckles could tell stories of some of the stupid shit I've done. Um, a lot of the stories that were shared these last few days have really just opened my eyes up to the person I was, you know, the, 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 the not so good person I was and uh, I'm actually ashamed of it, you know. I haven't said this to anyone, but when I did get locked up and I nearly lost my family, I made a promise to myself that I would never lift my fist again and fight. And till this day, I've kept that promise. I haven't thrown a punch at anyone. And what's crazy is this, though. I've been put in situations where I, 
I might have had to fight my way out of it, but I've learned to look at the situation different, not react and, and just talk it, you know. But I've also been in situations where I've seen people get hidings. I've, I've been in situations where I've seen people get bashed right in front of me and I've done nothing about it. And I've been abused by the people in their crew for not helping that I've got to stop it. But that's what got me into trouble from the start was trying to help and stop a situation and I ended up getting in trouble for it. And the old me wouldn't have thought at all. The old me would have just reacted. Where now there's a lot more on the table. You know, they say though it takes you to nearly lose something to, to actually realize and figure it out. And that's what it took for me to nearly lose my family and get locked up for me to finally stop doing the stupid shit I was doing. And I'm grateful for that, um, listen. Next time on A Local's Tale.